Whenever a new gun releases on Call of Duty Warzone, you often get the scramble of every YouTuber to create a brand new loadout video for you guys to enjoy. It's something I enjoy doing here on the channel and something a lot of YouTubers do, generally speaking. But a lot of them do get it wrong, and I have seen some loadout videos out there that just flat out make no sense or are people just reaching for specific titles. And rather than having you guys go on to various different websites, figure out all the individual statistics of every attachment, today I want to give you a simplistic rundown of how the pros and how the YouTubers create every loadout that they use in Warzone. I'm going to be talking about the individual attachments that we all use, and I'm also going to be talking about some of the inconsistencies and non-factual information that I've seen here on YouTube and on the internet. There's a lot of mistakes online, especially pertaining to Cold War weapons, which have various different attachment issues that don't actually work entirely properly, and also work in a very different dynamic to modern warfare weapons. And we'll be covering all of this in this video today, and from this video forward, you probably will never have to look at another loadout video again you'll be able to figure out all for yourself what it is that you need to do to optimize every single weapon in your loadout. I should also note for this video that the agency and GRU suppressors, which I'm going to be talking about for Black Ops Cold War weapons, uh, are going to be hotfixed to work exactly identically as the monolithic suppressor from Modern Warfare. So that's not something that's a permanent change, it was just a major mess up during the actual patch of Season 2 of Cold War. We're going to start at the very top of the priority list, and there are two things that you need in every single loadout that you use, regardless if it's an automatic weapon, a sniper rifle, an SMG, or an AR. And that is, number one, bullet velocity, and number two, suppression. These two are effectively quintessential to everything that you will do in Warzone. The first one is bullet velocity, and typically this is often the longest barrel available on any given weapon, which will give you the highest amount of bullet velocity. The reason bullet velocity is important is for two reasons. Number one, it increases and optimizes the overall range effectiveness of your weapon, and allows you to hit targets that are further away, because the projectile reaches those targets quicker. For example, if you're using a Car 98 sniper rifle, using the longest barrel on the Car 98 effectively means that from the moment the sniper round is fired, to the moment it hits hits the target, the time in which that takes and the lead distance that you have to make per shot has been significantly reduced because the bullet velocity is higher. In effect, your bullet will reach target A to B much quicker from the second it leaves your barrel. And this applies to absolutely every weapon in the game, because if you're using an SMG for example, like a MAC-10, you still want your bullets to hit the target faster. So choosing the barrel with the most bullet velocity is exactly what you have to do. Because if I have the barrel with the highest bullet velocity, and I encounter somebody else with a Mac 10 who doesn't have that barrel or has a slower bullet velocity barrel, then it means that my bullets will hit him faster than his bullets hit me. Effectively meaning that in the overall damage system of things, I will deal more damage to him before he can deal more damage to me, and that means that I will win that gunfight provided I land a similar number of shots. If you're using the same bullet velocity barrel, then that means it's simply a case of who is more accurate, but effectively you don't want to put yourself at a velocity disadvantage, because it means that you will be killed. It's hard to notice these things in really fast gunfights, but effectively, anybody who is not using the max velocity barrel for the Mac 10 is at a major disadvantage to anybody who is using one. And the same principle applies to assault rifles, light machine guns, and everything in between. And the next part is suppression, and the reason for this is because nobody wants to be lit up like a Christmas tree on Verdansk on the minimap. It's just something that you fundamentally need in Warzone, and even though there have been times where some suppressors haven't worked, it is absolutely essential that you have this. So this is the monolithic suppressor, the agency suppressor, and the GRU suppressor. These are the three suppressors you should use on both Modern Warfare and Cold War weapons, because they also increase bullet velocity. Not only do they increase sound suppression and stop you appearing on the map, these are the suppressors which also add an extra layer of bullet velocity to make your bullets land faster on targets. And as we just stated in the previous little iteration there, your bullet velocity is the most critical statistic, so ensuring that you use one of these suppressors to maximize that is absolutely fundamental. Beyond the longest barrel and having a monolithic agency or GRU suppressor, the next most important thing is nailing down accuracy. And this is a very critically important thing and it's something that I'm going to be talking about quite extensively here, because a lot of the Cold War weapons and a lot of the Cold War loadout videos on YouTube are fundamentally incorrect. 
More often than not, people will say that an underbarrel foregrip attachment is in order to reduce recoil, and that's actually partially correct, but the real reason for it is to reduce horizontal recoil or horizontal bounce. If you've ever wondered why every single YouTuber solidly recommends that you use the Commando foregrip on more or less any assault rifle, it's because of the reduction in horizontal bounce. In Warzone, it's very easy to control vertical recoil by just pulling down on the analog stick or pulling down on your mouse, but you can't control horizontal recoil, and this is often the reason why people who use weapons like the AMAX or people who are using Cold War assault rifles often feel inaccurate with the guns that they're using. And if you're somebody who's on console who hasn't used the Commando foregrip on your Modern Warfare weapons, you'll notice that it's hard to hit your targets because the gun is bouncing sideways. You can compensate for vertical recoil, but you fundamentally cannot compensate for horizontal recoil. The Commando Foregrip is highly recommended for Modern Warfare weapons because it reduces horizontal bounce by 15%. So that means weapons like the Scar-H, the Odin, the Amax, and really any kind of high caliber weapon which bounces side to side when you fire it, gets a massive reduction in that recoil value. This is far more important with Cold War weapons though, because Cold War weapons inherently have a much higher horizontal recoil bounce value than any other weapon in Warzone. The best examples I have of these are the Cold War MP5 and the Fafar. Everybody who uses the Fafar for some reason uses things like the Bruiser foregrip, and they'll tell you to use different other foregrips here and there, but if you're not using the Field Agent grip, then you're putting yourself at a massive disadvantage. And this applies to every Cold War weapon that has a Field Agent grip. You can't compensate for horizontal recoil, and Cold War weapons have some of the highest values of horizontal recoil. Using the Field Agent foregrip will reduce that by 15%, which is maximally important for things like the Fafar, for the Cold War MP5, and more or less any other Cold War weapon in between. Even some barrels actually reduce horizontal recoil, and that's why I use the Task Force barrel over the Ranger barrel. Although it only has 54% bullet velocity compared to the Ranger Barrel's 89% bullet velocity, the reduction in horizontal bounce by a further 15% means that the Fafar ends up being an accurate beam machine at further ranges rather than it bouncing all over the place and being completely unusable. So we've already covered three of the five critical attachments available to you. The next one is most obviously ammunition, and this is of course a mobility versus ammunition capacity trade-off, and often people who use ARs go for the maximum mag, which is 60 rounds, sometimes it's 50 rounds, but rarely do people tell you to go to the sort of 100 or 200 round territory, and the reason for that is because you do need the maximum amount of ammo for the maximum killing potential per mag, but you don't need a level of ammo to the extent that it slows your character down and makes you an easier target to shoot, and makes you generally feel less mobile. The only reason that would be acceptable is if you were running a secondary weapon like a MAC-10, which you can switch to and move very quickly with. So yes, the highest ammo capacity is absolutely important, and if you're using something like a sniper rifle, you have to do the trade-off between aim down sight time, the trade-off between mobility, and the trade-off between how quickly you can reload. Now, typically there are some weapons where this works better than others. For example, the LW3 Fast Mag doesn't really have any mobility penalties overall for the Cold War sniper rifle, but it does actually give you a really fast reload, which is better than having, for example, a 9-round Fast Mag which has more ammo per shot but fundamentally reduces your mobility quite significantly. And that's all you have to look out for. You don't want your sniper rifles to be slower, you don't want your assault rifles to be too slow, and in terms of light machine guns that's kind of a your choice kind of scenario. If you're looking for a long range weapon and don't really care too much about the aim down sight time, then that's a trade off that you're willing to make. So that's four of the five attachments. The last attachment is really down to you in terms of what it is that you're looking for in your weapon. For example, if you want a long range weapon, you'll typically want to use a three times sight, or for example, in a Cold War weapon, a two or four times sight, and that will give you some range options in that scenario. If you're somebody like me who doesn't really like iron sights, I use the holographic sight on my M13. Uh, that's pretty important. And it's also worth mentioning that specific sights have a recoil or visual recoil reduction. The VLK 3.0 and the Holographic 1.0 are a perfect example of that as they actually reduce the recoil you see on screen and make your weapons more accurate. 
Some of them even reduce the actual horizontal bounce. Uh, there are a couple examples of this. The Merc Thermal Optic, for example, does that. Uh, the C480 Pro Optic does that. The VLK 3.0 does that. And some of them just flat out add ADS time and don't really have any other benefits of that variety. Uh, the Scout Combat Optic, for example, a 2.1 time sight, which not many people use, actually gives you a vertical recoil reduction of 11% and a horizontal recoil reduction of 20%. And these are things that you can check out on True gamedata.com i highly recommend it for these last final attachments because they're going to be the things that kind of make a difference uh, but as the cold war weapons and the modern warfare weapons have better representation of their statistics and what they actually do in the game itself you'll have to use these tools less and less which is a really good thing and hopefully raven software sort out all the cold war statistics soon so yeah, if you want those range options or you want something to make your gun feel more accurate, an optic is a great way to go. For sniper rifles, you may want to explore the option of a stock. Some of them make you a little bit more precise or make you move even quicker. I, for example, even use this on an assault rifle. I use the Raider stock on the Fafar because it adds that little extra layer of mobility with the weapon and makes it just feel a little bit quicker and a little bit snappier, and I find that the iron sight is good enough that I don't really need an optic. So an optic and a stock is definitely an option that you can explore, a perk is most certainly an option you can explore, and a laser is definitely an option you can explore. A perk can be really handy if you want a gun to reload quicker and feel a little bit slappier with uh, sleight of hand, or if you want a sniper rifle to have focus, which reduces the amount of flinch you get per shot. Most pros in Warzone, for example, will use sleight of hand on the 45 round Modern Warfare MP5 because it allows you to get those extra bullets in the mag and make the gun more effective at taking out multiple targets. Traditionally, for long range weapons, I recommend that you go for something like an optic, and if you're looking for something to improve your short range statistics or overall mobility, I would use a perk, a laser, or often a stock variant if that's available to you. So really, the fifth attachment is yours to play around with, and what I would recommend is using the gun in Warzone and seeing if there are any pitfalls that could be better. For example, does the gun still have just a little bit more horizontal bounce? If so, put an optic on it and you might reduce that. Does the gun feel sluggish when you aim down sight? If so, put a stock on it and you can make it more mobile. Does it feel too slow when you aim down sight? Put a tack laser on it and you can increase the ADS speed quite significantly. Or does it reload too slowly? There you go, sleight of hand and you're all sorted and ready to go. So these are all options available to you and the fifth attachment is really your choice and it's something that can benefit your weapon and make it better. But that's about everything you need to know, guys. That's everything that we do as YouTubers to figure out what it is that we're supposed to be doing with these weapons. And it's every stat and statistic that you should be fundamentally aware of in terms of how you make your weapon in Warzone. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, leave a like, leave a sub, and I'll see you again in the next one.